Brandon, congratulations. You, uh, you know, you said it. Wow, what a moment. I mean, uh, the emotion that you had, it was, it was pretty unbelievable. So just talk about even now how you're feeling after capturing the belt this evening. <laughs> Man, I can't believe it. You know, it's, this moment is so special. You know, I, I, I'm always, you know, trying to make jokes and play with everybody, but today was an emotional day for me. You know, I start to cry because I feel it in the bottom of my heart. This moment is, I worked so hard for that fucking belt. You know, it's, it's pretty. You know, it's pretty. I have 10 years like a professional, 15 years um, doing this sport and this moment is so special for I mean not just for me it's special for all the people around me you know who support me in all this journey you said it was six months of preparation after the first fight you know a six-month camp I guess what was the biggest thing you learned out of that first meeting that you were able to adjust to or change or make a difference I, I learned too much about myself you know, I, I can talk with you with about a lot of technical stuff, you know, like uh, the kicks, the, the boxing, the Muay Thai, all that stuff. But I learned too much. I mean, I'm real, you know, and my mind is, is made with another material, different material, definitely. So I worked so hard, you know, six months was so long, this training camp. Um, this training camp, uh, training camp take two or three years of my life, but I don't care, you know? I have the bell. I have the, the bell right now, and that is the most important thing. And, man, I don't have the, uh, enough uh, words to explain how I feel today. Yeah. Earlier this week, you kept your cool, but I'm wondering, what went through your head when he shoved you at the press conference? Did you think, like, I'm in his head a little bit, I, or what did you think? I won there. I won there, you know, actually... I saw Figueredo in the press conference. He looks different, you know. He keep his uh, sunglasses. Don't watch. Don't want to watch me directly to the eyes. The same in the in the ceremonial weigh-ins, and I don't know. I was very confident, you know. For me, a lot of technique, really good game plan, but my mindset. Uh, I was very confident. My mindset was the key of the victory so far. Yeah. What went through your head in the opening round? I think you probably thought you were getting out of there in the first. Uh, what, what, you know, what went through your head, and, and how did you kind of readjust and refocus? I, I, I saw him uh, going to the ground, uh, but I, I, I go for him. But I try to be very patient and very smart. You know, I try to, to keep a position, and because my my corners tell me how many times uh, in the round. So I, I keep a, a lot of uh, patience there. Uh, uh, you know. Keep the domination in the fight. Nice. Ultimately, you finished it off with a beautiful choke. I mean, did you think that the jiu-jitsu was going to be the way to get it done tonight? Man, the, the jiu-jitsu al always was, you know, the, my key of the victory. When I start in, in the sport, uh, I may start to win fights. The jiu-jitsu was always the key, you know. Uh, real naked chokes, triangles, uh, guillotines. Uh, but I am start to do more striking because I think I needed to improve in that area. But my jiu-jitsu... I was is there to help me to keep uh, the winning line. I know this win is for you, it's for your team, it's for your family and all that, but I mean, obviously the history of you being the first Mexican-born champion, what does it mean for you to represent Mexico as well as a UFC champ? Man, that, that was one of my principal goals, you know? Obviously, I have too much respect for guys like Caim Velasquez, like Henry Cejudo. They put too much work in, in the sport for my country too. You know. Caim Velasquez bring the UFC uh, to Mexico in 2014. You know, that was amazing. It put the, the, the mixed martial arts in Mexico in another level. But uh, now, me, I, born, I mean, I born in Tijuana, you know? I born in Tijuana, I grew up there, I, I went to the school there. Uh, I, I suffered the bad opportunities, uh, fucking government there, you know? Uh, the Huge companies don't su don't put support in the sports, uh, especially in the mixed martial arts because it's a new sport for the country. So, man, I know with this belt, I put the sport in other level, and that makes me feel amazing. That's awesome. The last thing for me, I mean, I'm sure you want to enjoy this, and now that you're the champ, you don't have to call anybody out. They have to come to you. But are there any fights that are important to you or make sense to you? Are there names that you want to see in a title defense? 
Yes, de definitely, yes. You know, this training camp was so long. I, I mean, to be honest, it was six months. Six months of preparations. I mean, game plan, uh, drills, uh, going to the gym, trying to make every single movement of the, of, of the fight. Uh, my... My mind, you know, was so. I definitely I need vacations. I need I need to go so to some beach. I don't know, I don't know where, but I need to rest. I need to rest because after the first fight, I try to enjoy, you know, my family in the Christmas. But one part of my mind is still in the fight, you know, it's still with Figueiredo, it's still with the pressure of the next fight because I I, I knew the the rematch uh, will come in, you know, so. I don't know, man. I have some some names, you know. Askar Askarov is is doing very well. Uh, Cody Garban, he wanted to come to the to the division, but he lost his last fight against Rod Font, so I don't know. Uh, the trilogy against uh, Figueiredo can be a possibility, but this fight was wasn't even close, you know. So I don't know, man. I just want to go to my to my house, put my cell phone, and enjoy my family and a lot of bad food. Why not? <laughs> Brandon, uh, Brandon, I'm here. Uh, physically, how did uh, Davidson Figueredo feel in there compared to your first fight? Man, we need to be honest. He cut too much weight. Uh, I think it's unnecessary. You know, this is sport. It's so hard because you cut weight because you, you want some advantage in the fight. You know, you want to feel uh, stronger. Uh, you, you want to feel with more energy than your opponent. But man, we said actually the the embedded, you know, uh, Figueiredo crying after uh, make way, very dramatic in the last uh, minute of the, you know, of the time. I think it's not necessary, but obviously it's not my decision. It's decision of the of the, his team and and, and and him. Sorry. What did you two say in the octagon after? Look, he came over and put his arm around you. He lifted your arm up. You guys talked to Ab Davidson uh, tonight. What did you guys talk about in there? <laughs> He's speaking Portuguese to me. So I don't know. <laughs> but man, uh, man, he was very respectful, and I knew that the the guy he tried to put some a special flavor in the fight, you know, trying to be the bad guy. But that doesn't work, uh, work with me, you know. Uh, my mindset is different. So the guy is a father. Uh, as me, you know, he has a family, he has a wife, a daughter. So the guys are nice people. Just sometimes he tr try too much to be the the bad guy, but it's sometimes not necessary. He's a respectful, respectful guy, and I really appreciate it. And finally, uh, looking at through Twitter, uh, fighters like John Jones, Daniel Cormier, Jorge Masvidal, they're all praising you on Twitter. Nate Diaz was just in here, and when we asked about you, he started to clap and said it was an awesome fight, and he's really happy for you winning your title. So what does it mean that your fellow fighters, people that you watched growing up, are praising you? <laughs> it's a, man, it's a dream come true. I'm not a very huge fan of all these guys, you know? Uh, imagine that, you know? Actually, I, I had photo, for instance, can you come with me? Ah, can I take a picture? And uh, just engage you, can I, can I take a picture with, man, I want a picture with them, you know? <laughs> So man, this a dream come true, and I really appreciate it. All, all these, all these guys, uh, they like my my work, and I love it. Brandon over here, congrats, champ. Thank you. Would Thank it be you. safe to say that you came in the first fight, you thought you could win, but you came in today, you knew you could win. Sorry again. Your mindset from the first time oh. to the second time, like you thought you could win, but it seemed like this all week, it seemed like you walked around with that swag, like you could, you you knew you were gonna win because you were bullying the bully. Yeah. So, <laughs> good one. First of all, my mind is, is very strong, you know? Because I, I had very bad moments in my life, you know? For example, I don't know, 2018, I hate that year of my life. It was horrible, I lost two fights in a row. Uh, UFC released me to the company. Uh, I start to, you know, I need money, I need everything, problems, my surgery of my daughter. What's a hard moment? And all these moments uh, built my mind until today. So, for ex in the press conference, uh, he pushed me, uh, Figueroa pushed me, uh, but my mind was in the correct way, you know? My mind was always focused on what happened, you know? Like, I don't care, you can push me 100 times if, if, you, if you want, but that 
nothing changed. I'll be the next uh, flyweight champion of the world and I'm the best, you know? I, and I, I have a lot of uh, uh, memories uh, with Rose Namayunas. That was a special moment for me, you know, because she's a, she was an uh, underdog against Joanna and she was an underdog against Whaley. And, and I remember that moment when she started to, to say to, to uh, themselves, like, I'm the best, I'm the best. Like, that was like, wow. You need to believe that, you know? And my mind is, is, is bu building with another material, material, definitely. Have any Mexican combat stores reached out to you, like Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. or Canelo or any of them? And do you, do you inspire to get to that level? Because these guys get a lot of love. When they show up to any boxing fight, people go crazy. <laughs> do you inspire to get to that level, but bring it to the MMA side? Man, obviously in Mexico, we have a huge uh, culture, a huge history in the, in the boxing, you know, in combat, combat sports in general, but definitely in boxing. Right now it's Canelo Alvarez, uh, but before was Julio Cesar Chavez. My favorite boxing fighter is uh, Juan Manuel Marquez. Uh, I love, for example, the fight against Katsidis. I love that matchup. So this is mixed martial arts, you know? It's a uh, new sport, I mean, for the world. Even for the world, it's a new sport. Imagine for my country, for Mexico. So I'm doing the, the correct things to put the, the, the mixed martial arts in other place. And I'm making history, you know? Uh, right now, the guy from Tijuana, the kid from Tijuana, Tijuana is the is the champion, so I I love to start to think um, I'm part of the history of the sport tonight. And something that has to do with fighting, but has to do with your life. You're very proud for being from Tijuana. Canelo's talked about he moved to San Diego because once he started winning, his family became a target. Is there anything you now that your name's out there and people know who you are? Do you think you might have to move across the border? Something that we don't have to deal in the states, but you have to deal over there in Mexico. Man, I mean, for example, um, uh, I, uh, after the last fight, I bought a house in Las Vegas, you know? Definitely was a professional decision because I'm part of the broadcast in the U uh, for the UFC in Spanish, uh, and uh, the production is in the Apex. Uh, the Performance Institute is in Las Vegas. Uh, they give me physical therapies, they give me free food, they give me everything. So, was a professional decision to me to move uh, all my life to Las Vegas. In the future, I want to go again to, to, to Mexico, to Tijuana, no? But right now, I need to, to live there for my family. Every, everything is not, it's not just for, it's not for me. It's for my wife, it's for my daughters, you know? So if I need to die for, for them, I can do that, you know? I, I don't care nothing. Uh, the people know my love for my country. The people lo uh, know the love for my city, for, for Tijuana. I, I still have my house, uh, another house there. But right now I live in, in Vegas. I'm very comfortable there. I, I, in the future, uh, we'll see, you know? I wanna go again to Tijuana, but right now it is what it is. And final question for me, how cool is it have all week have all the support from the people here in Arizona? And then now, you're, <laughs> now that you got the belt, you got people all across the globe that know who Brandon Moreno is. Man, it's crazy. Actually, last last Tuesday, I I had interviews from I, I Australia, I think so, and and India. What's crazy? You know, imagine Brandon Moreno with fans in India, with fans in Asia, uh, a lot of Mexican people here in Phoenix. A lot of support, a lot of uh, people support me. I re man, I, when I start to walk to the octagon, all the people was crazy in that moment. When I uh, get the, got the real naked choke and uh, won the fight, the people was crazy in that moment. Uh, I fought here in Phoenix before, uh, before to come to the UFC. So the people know me here in, in Phoenix and definitely Phoenix has a special uh, place in my, in my heart. Brandon, to your left over here. Hey uh, who do you predict will be the next Mexican champion after you? Oof, good question, bro. I mean, obviously, uh, Pantera Rodriguez has an uh, important, important fight against Max Holloway. I understand that people say uh, Pantera is the underdog, but you never, uh, you never know. You never know because this this sport is about the styles, and Pantera has an a crazy, crazy style of fighting, you know? Uh, 
Alexa Grasso moving to the, to the flyweight division looks impressive. Looks definitely better than in, in 115. Irene Aldana, Irene Aldana had the opportunity against Holly Holm, was on a hard fight for, for her, but she just she's still there, you know. She's I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Uh, Mogli Benitez, he's working so hard. Uh, uh, who more? Uh, other. Uh, we have a, a lot of. I don't want to make an, uh, any mistake because we can start to co uh, start uh, other Mexican fight, fighters start to come to the company. So it's about work, man. It's about uh, hard work, and that's it. For sure. And you know, I was there in Portland for your UFC debut. Oof, you got that man, upset over you. over Luis Smolka, and biggest moment of that <laughs> night. Just you know, everybody went crazy for you getting that upset. Would you ever have imagined that you'd have something that would top that the way that this did? Oh, obviously, yes. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't knew about the time. You know, but all my life was for this. I, I mean, all my life for in this sport was for this, and I did it today. I remember the fight against Luis Smolka was very inspiring that I, I was very inspired in that moment because was in short notice uh, the the season of the ultimate fighter uh, was on tv in that point so anybody expect too much about my performance that night but again i was very confident you know i don't care that shit of the, the underdog i don't care that you know, the people can talk and the people can start to predict what happened in the fights but i have the last word congrats champ Thank you, bro. Hey, Brandon, right up the middle. Uh, I think the most beautiful part of the whole night was on your way in when you stopped and kissed your daughter. How much does that mean? Do you have your family here? Do you fight different when they're in the arena? <sighs> I was on fire in that moment when I saw my daughter. Uh, my mind started to, you know, actually, uh, I, I say that before, but, you know, in my normal life, I'm trying to be, like, very respectful, very uh, happy guy, very humble, uh, <laughs> but... When I go to the fights, I'm trying to change all that stuff to uh, an angry guy, you know, an angry guy, uh, very unrespectful, trying to kill that somebody. And when I saw my daughter in that moment, that bad guy comes like a 100%, you know, and put my man in the correct place to try to kill uh, my opponent. And that happened this night. I know you're proud to represent your own country, but millions of Americans have fallen in love with you as well and are big fans of yours now. So how cool is that to get to have fans all over the world, but uh, especially right here in America where UFC is, is so big? So, you know, I, I'm starting to improve too much my, my, my English, for, for example, so more people can uh, know about me, about, you know, about my life, about my history. So uh, obviously I have a lot of people support me from my country, you know, from, from my country, from Me Mexicans, from Latin America in general. But I have people too around the world and that makes me feel amazing, you know. It's a dream come true for me. Thank you. Brandon, right here. Mm -hmm. um, has it sunk in yet that you are a star now in UFC? Because during a press conference you asked... Dana, that, <laughs> and now, because not only you're a star in Mexico, okay. you're a star in Latin America as well, too. This is beyond just Mexico. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. I mean, I don't, I don't see uh, my social media. I don't see nothing what happened in Mexico. My, my coach uh, showed me in a video with uh, a lot of people in my, uh, 150 people in my gym in Tijuana celebrating like a crazy people, everybody crazy there, very happy for my, by my performance. So we'll see, brother. We'll see what happened after this victory. But I, I know this victory is huge for, for, for everybody, no? Last, question, last yeah. question. Um, you were having a success with him standing up. What made you take it to the ground? Man, I, I, I say that before. As, uh, I felt his, uh, the power of Figueroa in the last fight. You know, I mean, the guy's real. The guy punched hard. But it's nothing out of, of this world. You know, so I started to throw punches. I started to connect very well in the first round. Then the guy tried to take me to the ground. He, he did it, actually. But then 
I put him uh, him on the uh, on bottom. I'm start I'm start to work. I try to be very patient, you know, because he's very explosive. He pushes you hips and try to get up very quickly. So I try, you know, to be very patient in every single position. And you know, the the third round, I start to work with my body. I I don't I can't remember very well now, but I think it was the body lock, and then we went to the ground. And then he's, uh, he's back and start to work with the body lock and start to, to try to find the red naked choke. I tried, uh, I tried once, doesn't work. I was very patient and try again and, and that's it. Señor Brando Moreno, uh, congratulations, felicidades. Muchas gracias. Um, a few days ago, I asked you what would you think it was going to be the outcome? And I say knockout or submission. So you made a promise. <laughs> <laughs> to your fans, to yes. finish it earlier, right? Cierto, muchas gracias. Yeah, and congratulations. And uh, so the question is, at what point after the first uh, submission failed, because he got away, you believe that you were ready for the next one, because you were waiting. And when, yes. Yep. So I remember that moment very clear in my mind. In my mind. Uh, I knew I, I was won the first and second round. So I, in, uh, for example, in, in other fights, when I'm starting in the UFC, for example, I, I, if I was very frustrated if, this is, if the first uh, submission, if I don't get the first submission, you know? But I, now I, I have too much experience, you know? I'm very young, I have uh, 20, 27 years old, but I have too much time in this sport. I have too much experience. So I get the body lock and I say, I mean, if, if I don't get the submission, I can control him here, spend some minutes here, punch with the, in the back, and still win, as, keep winning the fight. And, 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 I, and I did it. I, I tried uh, uh, first. I can do that in that moment. Try it again. And, and that's it. Gracias, campeón. Felicidades. Uh, Gracias. Uh, una Brandon. última pregunta. Perdón. <laughs> Perdón. Primeramente, felicidades, Gracias. paisano. Uh, pusiste nuestro, uh, el nombre de nuestro país en alto en, el, uh, en UFC. Tenías a la gente bailando, <laughs> riendo, gritando y hasta llorando eh, de toda la noche. <laughs> Hubo un momento que estabas en el suelo, la gente se encendió y gritaba, México, México, Locura. moreno. Y el famoso dicho, sí se puede. ¿Cómo se sentí, te sentías ahí en ese momento? Increíble. Y, y ¿sabes algo? O sea, lo dije con Joe Rogan y, y, y lo quiero volver a decir todas las veces que se me sea permitido. O sea, yo vengo de un país en el cual a veces, muchas veces nos decepcionamos, ¿no? Porque se, se escucha mucho el sí se puede, y sí se puede. Y muchas veces nos quedamos cortos y no se logra, no se pudo. A veces nos dan, nos dan carrilla, nos dicen, eh, no, pues no se pudo. Y, digo, oh, y todos bien frustrados y tristes. O sea, no sé qué vaya a pasar el próximo año, no sé qué vaya a pasar mañana, el próximo mes. Lo único que sé es que, o sea, le, le regalé la alegría a mi gente y les quería decir que oh, hoy sí se pudo. Hoy sí se pudo y eso es increíble. Eh, Brandon, eh, Terrible Morales, eh, Jaime Munguía, Rey Misterio, son algunos tijuanenses que han puesto tu Cierto. ciudad en alto. ¿Qué te sientes por sumarte a esta lista de personajes que han entrado en ese, que han roto ¿no? ese, ese nivel, eh, sobre todo de Tijuana y bueno, para todo México? Mira, la, la verdad es que o sea, de, o sea, lo, ya, ya lo había dicho anteriormente, o sea, tenemos una cultura de, de, del deporte de contacto muy grande en México, especialmente en el boxeo, o sea, tenemos... Eh, infinidad de campeones, ¿no? O sea, el terrible Morales es uno de ellos. También, por ejemplo, o sea, Rey Misterio es un histórico en la lucha libre. Artes marciales mixtas. Hablando de artes marciales mixtas, todavía nos falta camino por recorrer. Yo lo opino así, pero como comentaba anteriormente también, o sea, Caín Velázquez puso el deporte en otro nivel cuando lo llevó a México en 2014. Ahora, Brandon Moreno teniendo el cinturón y llevándolo a México y representando completamente los colores, yo o sea, sé en el fondo de mi corazón que acabo de poner el deporte en otro nivel y es parte del camino y es parte de lo que quiero hacer, ¿no? Que cuando me retire, o sea, la gente sepa quién es Brandon Moreno y, y estar plasmado en, en, la, en las calles de Tijuana y en, las, y en México en general. Brandon, right here. Hola, um, So, you, you, you mentioned, it, mentioned it earlier. Um, so, you came to the UFC... You got released in, in 2018. 
you fought your way back, now you're champion. For any fighter that has been recently released, what, what's your message to them? <laughs> Man, never give up. Sounds easy, you know? Sounds very, very easy. Never give up, you know, the, the images from, uh, from social media, you know? The inspirational uh, photos you, 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 you watch. In some point, it's easy, never give up. Obviously, the sacrifice, the discipline, that hard moments when you feel like very, very bad and you still go, you keep going. The, I mean, if you go out of the UFC, it's not the end of the way. I, I, I promise, and I really believe in and I'm, you know, the graphical description of that. You can do it, you know, free commercial. But you can do it and never give up. Congrats. Awesome. Thank you. Love you guys. Thank you so much for everything. I need to eat something. I'm so hungry. I need that pizza. <laughs> Me? Oh, I think you're famous. You don't ever, you never know.